the Tait Tiria Upanishad. Thou art indeed the manifested Brahman. Of thee will I speak. Thee will I proclaim in my thoughts as true. Thee will I proclaim on my lips as true. May truth protect me. May it protect my teacher. May it protect us both. May glory come to us both. May the light of Brahman shine in us both. Thou art Brahman, one with the syllable Om, which is in all scriptures the supreme syllable, the mother of all sound. Do thou strengthen me with true wisdom. May I, O Lord, realize the immortal. May my body be strong and whole. May my tongue be sweet. May my ears hear only praise of thee. The syllable Om is verily thine image. Through this syllable thou mayest be attained. Thou art beyond the grasp of the intellect. Vouchsafe that I forget not what I have learned in the scriptures. Thou art the source of all happiness and of all prosperity. Do thou come to me as the goddess of prosperity and shower thy blessings upon me. May the seekers after truth gather round me. May they come from everywhere that I may teach them thy word. May I be a glory among men. May I be richer than the richest. May I enter into thee, O Lord. And mayest thou reveal thyself unto me. Purified am I by thy touch. O Lord of manifold forms, thou art the refuge of those who surrender themselves to thee. Reveal thyself to me. Make me thine own. I take my refuge in thee. Thou art the Lord, immortal, self-luminous, and of golden effulgence, within the lotus of every heart. Within the heart art thou revealed to those that seek thee. He who dwells in thee becomes king over himself. <clears throat> he who controls his wandering thoughts, he becomes master of his speech and of all his organs of sense, he becomes master of his intellect. Thou art Brahman, whose form is invisible, like either, whose self is truth. Thou art perfect peace and immortality, the solace of life, the delight of the mind. May I worship thee. Om is Brahman. Om is all. He who meditates on Om attains to Brahman. Having attained to Brahman, a sage declared, I am life. My glory is like the mountain peak. I am established in the purity of Brahman. I have attained the freedom of the self. I am Brahman, self-luminous, the brightest treasure. I am endowed with wisdom. I am immortal, imperishable. Om, peace, peace, peace. To a lay student, let your conduct be marked by right action, including study and teaching of the scriptures. By truthfulness in word, deed, and thought. By self-denial and the practice of austerity by poise and self-control, by performance of the everyday duties of life with a cheerful heart and an unattached mind. Speak the truth, do your duty, do not, do not neglect the study of the scriptures. Do not cut the thread of progeny, swerve not from truth, deviate not from the path of good, revere greatness. Let your mother be a god to you. Let your father be a god to you. Let your teacher be a god to you. Let your guest 
also be a God to you. Do only such actions as are blameless. Always show reverence to the great. Whatever you give to others, give with love and respect. Gifts must be given in abundance with joy, humility, and compassion. If at any time there is any doubt with regard to right conduct, follow the practice of great souls who are guileless of good judgment and devoted to truth. This conduct Oh, thus, conduct yourself always. This is the injunction. This is the teaching. And this is the command of the scriptures. He who knows Brahman attains the supreme goal. Brahman is the abiding reality. He is pure knowledge. And he is infinity. He who knows that Brahman dwells within the lotus of the heart becomes one with him and enjoys all blessings out of brahman who is the self came either out of either air out of air fire out of fire water out of water earth out of earth vegetation out of vegetation food out of food the body of man the body of man composed of the essence of food is the physical sheath of the self. From food are born all creatures, which live upon food, and after death return to food. Food is the chief of all things. It is therefore said to be medicine for all diseases of the body. Those who worship food as Brahman gain all material objects. From food are born all beings, which being born, grow by food. All beings feed upon food, and when they die, food feeds upon them. Different from the physical sheath is the vital sheath. This is encased in the physical sheath and has the same form. Through this, the senses perform their office. From this, men and beasts derive their life. This determines the length of life of all creatures. He who worships the vital self, the vital sheath, as Brahman, lives to complete his span of life. This sheath is the living self of the physical sheath. Different from the vital sheath is the mental sheath. This is encased in the vital sheath and has the same form. Words cannot express the bliss of Brahman. Mind cannot reach it. The sage who knows it is freed from fear. The mental sheath is the living sheath. The mental sheath is the living self of the vital sheath. Different from the mental sheath is the intellectual sheath. This is encased in the mental sheath and has the same form. All actions, sacrificial or otherwise, are performed through the intellect. All the senses pay homage to the intellectual sheath. He who worships intellect as Brahman does not err. He does not identify himself with other sheaths and does not yield to the passions of the body. Different from the intellectual sheath is the sheath of the ego. This sheath is encased in the intellectual sheath and has the same form. Beyond all sheaths is the self. Vain and useless become his life who thinks of Brahman as non-existent. He alone who knows Brahman as existent truly lives. Surely at death a foolish man does not attain Brahman, but only a wise man. Desiring that he should become many, that he should make of himself many forms, Brahman meditated. Meditating, he created all things. Creating all things, he entered into everything. Entering into all things, he became that which has shape and that which is shapeless. 
he became that which can be defined and that which cannot be defined. He became that which has support and that which has not support. He became that which is conscious and that which is not conscious. He became that which is gross and that which is subtle. He became all things whatsoever. Therefore, the wise call him the real. Concerning which truth is written, before creation came into existence, Brahman existed as the unmanifest. From the unmanifest, he created the manifest. From himself, he brought forth himself. Hence, he is known as the self-existent. The self-existent is the essence of all felicity. Who could live? Who could breathe? Is that blissful self? If that blissful self dwelt not within the lotus of the heart, he it is that gives joy. When a man finds existence and unity in the self, who is the basis of life, who is beyond the senses, who is formless, inexpressible, beyond all predicates, then alone does he transcend fear. So long as there is the least idea of separation from him, there is fear. To the man who thinks himself learned, yet knows not himself as Brahman, Brahman, who drives away all fear, appears as fear itself. Concerning which truth it is written, through fear, of Brahman the wind blows and the sun shines through fear of him Indra the god of rain Agni the god of fire and Yama the god of death perform their task who could live who could breathe if that blissful self dwelt not within the lotus of the heart he it is that gives joy of what nature is this joy? Consider the lot of a young man, noble, well-read, intelligent, strong, healthy, with all the wealth of the world at his command. Assume that he is happy and measure his joy as one unit. 100 times that joy is one unit of the joy of Gandharvas. But no less joy than Gandharva's has the seer to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of Gandharva's is one unit of the joy of celestial Gandharva's. But no less joy than celestial Gandharva's has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of celestial Gandharvas is one unit of joy of the Petris in their paradise. But no less joy than the Petris is the in their paradise has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of the Petris in their paradise is one unit of joy of the Devas, but no less joy than the Devas has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of the devas is one unit of the joy of the karma devas, but no less joy than the karma devas has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of the karma devas is one unit of the joy of the ruling devas, but no less joy than the ruling devas has the sage to whom the self has been revealed 
and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of the ruling devas is one unit of the joy of Indra, but no less joy than Indra as the sage to whom the self has been revealed, and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of Indra is one unit of the joy of Brihaspati, but no less joy than Brihaspati has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of Brihaspati is one unit of the joy of Prajapati, but no less joy than Prajapati has the sage to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. One hundred times the joy of Prajapati is one unit of the joy of Brahma, but no less joy than Brahma has the seer to whom the self has been revealed and who is without craving. He who is the self in man and he who is the self in the son are one. Verily, he who knows this truth overcomes the world. He transcends the physical sheath. He transcends the vital sheath. He transcends the mental sheath. He transcends the intellectual sheath. He transcends the sheath of the ego. It is written, He who knows the joy of Brahman, which words cannot express and the mind cannot reach, is free from fear. He is not distressed by the thought, Why did I not do what is right? Why did I do what is wrong? He who knows the joy of Brahman, knowing both good and evil, transcends both. Om. May Brahman protect us, may he guide us, may he give us strength and right understanding. May love and harmony be with us all. Bahariku, respectfully approaching his father, Varuna, said, Sir, teach me Brahman. Varuna explained to him the physical sheath and the vital sheath and the functions of the senses and added, He from whom all beings are born, in whom they live, being born, and to whom at death they return, seek to know him. He is Brahman. Baharigu practiced austerity and meditation. Then it seemed to him that food was Brahman, for of food all beings are born, by food they are sustained, being born and into food they enter after death. This knowledge, however, did not satisfy him. He again approached his father, Varuna, and said, Sir, teach me Brahman. Varuna replied, Seek to know Brahman by meditation. Meditation is Brahman. Bahariku practiced meditation and learned that primal energy is Brahman, for from primal energy all beings are born, by primal energy they are sustained, being born, and into primal energy they enter after death. But Bahariku was still doubtful about his knowledge, so he approached his father again and said, Sir, teach me Brahman. Varuna replied, Seek to know Brahman by meditation. Meditation is Brahman. Baharigu practiced meditation and learned that mind is Brahman. For from mind all beings are born, by mind they are sustained, being born, and into mind they enter after death. Still doubtful, he approached his father and said, Sir, Teach me Brahman. His father replied, Seek to know Brahman by meditation. Meditation is Brahman. Bahariku practiced meditation and learned that intellect is Brahman. For from intellect all beings are born. By intellect they are sustained. Being born and into intellect. 
they enter after death. Not yet satisfied, doubting his understanding, Baharigu approached his father and said, Sir, teach me Brahman. Varuna replied, Seek to know Brahman by meditation. Meditation is Brahman. Baharigu practiced meditation and learned that joy is Brahman. For from joy, all beings are born. By joy, they are sustained. Being born and into joy, they enter after death. This is the wisdom which Baharigu, taught by Varuna, attained within his heart. He who attains this wisdom wins glory, grows rich, enjoys health and fame. Brahman is to be meditated upon as the source of all thought and life and action. He is the splendor and wealth. He is the light and the stars. He is all things. Let a man meditate upon Brahman as support and he will be supported. Let him meditate upon Brahman as greatness and he will be great. Let him meditate upon Brahman as mind and he will be endowed with intellectual power. Let him meditate upon Brahman as, ador as adoration and he will be adored. Let him worship Brahman as Brahman and he will become Brahman. He who is the self in man and he who is the self in the sun are one. I am that self. I am life immortal. I overcome the world. I who am endowed with golden effulgence. Those who know me achieve reality. Om. Peace. Peace. Peace.